Good morning all. Um, I hope that you're well. Um, this is a, a very serious situation that we're going to need to, to, to understand about. So I'm going to take you through a tweet that was written by the heretical builder. Link, as usual, is in the Dubris for you to understand exactly what we're seeing. This is in relation to an organisation called the CPS. Now, for those of you that aren't in the UK, the CPS is the Crime Prosecution Service. When the police you know, investigate a crime, um, that crime is investigated is then ten sent to the Crime Prosecution Service for a decision on whether or not a prosecution will take place under that crime. You will have similar um, uh, principles and similar organisations within your own country's boundaries. This is specifically UK based because it is the UK's Crime Prosecution Service known as the CPS. And Rob the Builder has brought my attention to this and I think it's something that needs to be discussed. Um, so I will read what Rob has had to say and what he's discovered so far and then <clears throat> um, look at some of what I think will be the problems involved with it. The UK government now defines the following things as domestic abuse. Correctly sexing your child, refusing to pay for transition. Yes, you heard that right. It is important to appreciate how Orwellian this is, continues Rob. They're creating a paradigm where child abuse is framed as care. Now, if that doesn't set, yeah, I'm turning legitimate child safeguarding into abuse. So if you, you and I know, and I've said many times and I will continue to say it, that trans, gender identity and all the stuff that comes with it is an iatrogenic form of harm as illustrated by Hilary Cass in the Cass Review in her, part, in, in her halfway submission to the public and that by socially transitioning a child you are beginning harm. It is a harmful act, it is an act of abuse. And <clears throat> what the government is saying is that if, the, if you don't, play along with this, you could well be accused of domestic abuse and this could be a rider added to that domestic abuse as a hate crime, which means whatever sentence you get will be enhanced. Now, I'm not a believer in hate crime legislation at all. I want the whole lot gone. It's nonsense. Crime's a crime. Just sentence properly. Drives me mad. So he, he then continues, these aren't some minor policy tweaks. It's a brute force attempt to change the very fabric of society by undermining the parent-child bond that has formed the core social unit for the entirety of human history up until now. And this dystopian power move is being snuck in through the back door without any debate and without our consent. Link then from Rob in the tweet, as you'll see, which leads directly to the cps.gov.uk legal guidance in regards to domestic abuse and hate crimes. And he screenshotted it so that we can see exactly what it is that's being said. Um, trans and non-binary people can experience domestic abuse regardless of the gender identity of, uh, of either person. Trans and non-binary people can be subjected to unique forms of domestic abuse linked to their trans or non-binary identity. This, bear in mind this is from the Crown Prosecution Service. They're talking like this. They're talking the talk of the cultish TQ+. That's what they're doing, right? Um, the unique, uh, they are subjected to unique forms of domestic abuse linked to their trans or non-binary identity, including some that mirror those of LGB communities. How dare you? How dare you? I have nothing in common with a cross-dressing straight man. I have nothing in common with a, with a very deeply unwell young girl or boy. Nothing. Nothing. How, uh, just how dare they? What the hell do they think they're playing at? Right, therefore, this segment should be read in conjunction with sexual orientation. They are force teaming. The government, the Crown Prosecution Service, are taking this as an opportunity to force team LGB with, Q, with TQ+, in order to make sure that they can bring under the, under the guise of a hate crime any sense of reality. Reverse child safeguarding. Reverse it. To not affirm is abuse. And they're doing it by saying this is just the same as being gay. How dare they? Here is what they've said. Some examples of how trans and non-binary people may be abused by intimate partners or family members include the following. And it says, see also domestic violence, a resource for trans people in Brighton and Hove. So this has come from the heart of Weirdo Land, which is Brighton. And there's a listing which I'll take you through. So let's just quickly go through this listing. Using the process or, of transitioning or coming out as a form of control. How dare you? How dare you? Threatening or sharing pre-transition images. Well, what about these people that changed? Which ones do you share, right? So your photos of being kids. 
body shaming or criticizing the victim for being a real man or woman if they have not undergone reassignment surgery. Absolutely insane. They have this writes the gender soul, the gender identity soul into into the lawful behavior of the CPS and it must be stopped at the highest levels. Minimize or disregard the abuse by blaming the victim's perception on their hormones. It's absolutely surreal. Physically assaulting, surgically or medically altered body parts. What does that even mean? Withholding money for transitioning. Get that? Targeting sexual or emotional abuse towards parts of the body they are ashamed of or forcing the victim to expose scars. Refusing to use their preferred name or pronoun. Destroying medication or clothes. Rob then con continues, the heretical liberal, Rob then continues, also sharing pre-transition images is abuse. So those beloved family photos with your child that you've been posting their whole lives, better go and delete them all and make sure you don't forget any or you're a domestic abuser. That's what it's saying. I mean, that's what this insane idea is saying. What we also have to add in there is that you're now talking about a situation where Woman, a woman who is stuck with an AGP or paraphilic or fetish man, fetishistic man, and which we know that's the majority of them, is in a situation where if, they, if she doesn't let the man spend the budget for the house food on sparkly clothes, it could be seen as abusive, right? This is, give, this is giving carte blanche to narcissistic abusive men. So trans widows who already suffer enough are now gonna be seen to be abusers. And it's a very, very difficult thing because what will happen is they'll claim I've come out as if, you know, this is, some, this is some great revelation, like they were dealing with something real like sexuality, when what we're dealing with is fetishistic cross-dressing and other situations, as well as, as, well as uh, mental, uh, mental illness and difficulty and distress, is that in the vast majority of the older might be, right, okay, I'm gonna go and buy some clothes. And if, if, they, if they go, hang on a minute, I need to stop, you're not, you're not, spending, you're not spending family money on your fetish. Um, right, okay, make a note. Because they've taken on the priestly class of trans, it means then that the woman is in a defensive position having to state that what's happening to her is in fact the abuse, not the fact that she won't let Bob buy a, buy a dress from Monsoon. Okay, you think about how serious that is. How serious that is. They will be allowed with impunity to force their fetish and paraphilia on their families and their children, and by doing so also continue to do it in public, in the workplace, practicing a sexual fetish. The CPS is protecting fetishistic men. That's that simple. And this is a safeguarding concern on a massive scale. As has been mentioned by Rob, it turns the entire thing upside down. The entire thing upside down. Um, care becomes harm. Harm becomes care. Unbelievable. And then the final nail in the coffin, Rob has identified. Ah, of course, here's why. Underneath all of these insane stealth policies, there's always some middle-aged activist trans at the center of it behind the scenes, trans male at the center of it behind the scenes. CPU UK is taking their marching orders from Stonewall. He's then provided you with a Daily Mail article. All the links are in his tweet. Um, I'll also put them down in the doobries for you so you've got access. They've hired a transgender activist called Sophie Cook, who's been appointed to speak out champion of the Crown Prosecution Service. Um, <clears throat> and Sophie Cook has taken up the diversity and inclusion post and she has already, he, he has already shared several tweets with the acronym TERF, Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminist, a loaded term aimed at women who believe sex is biological and cannot be changed. In the new 31,000 a year role as the CPS Speak Out champion, he will be responsible for improving confidence amongst our employees and being able to speak openly about their experiences. But lawyers, sorry, according to the CPS job advert, uh, Cook will work just four days per week and it will mostly be from home. However, he is obliged to attend meetings in person if necessary. But lawyers and campaign groups have called for reassurances that women employees who express concerns about trans activism won't be silenced or discriminated against. I'm not sure this is even lawful. So, I mean, I'll wait for you know, people like Audrey and Sarah to step in and talk about this, but I would, I would question whether it's lawful, whether the CPS is in fact breaching the law by, by having these policies. Um, they have raised concerns that Cook could use the influential role to embed beliefs at the heart of the agency for responsible for prosecuting serious crime in England Wales. You bet. You bet. And then there's a picture of him with Jeremy Corbyn. Um, Cook also appeared on Newsnight in 2018, where he supported replacing the word woman with woman with an X. 
This is a full-on activist at the heart, at the heart of the Crown Prosecution Service, who is responsible for making prosecuting decisions on the individuals in the UK, and this cannot be allowed to stand. Um, I think it's an extraordinary, extraordinarily dangerous um, outcome. The position was put into place and the person hired around the 2nd of June. We're now at the beginning of July and this new guidance has surfaced. These people need to be stopped. So I'm going to leave it at that today. All right, you need to go and have a look. I'll put the links in. This needs to be discussed. We need to be talking about it. Um, and I imagine that we are Fair Cop and other organisations like the Bad Law Project, Lawrence Fox, etc. will hopefully be on all over this and ensure that under no circumstances are these people given a chance to bring this nonsense to actual use. It must stop. Um, they're, they're cementing iatrogenic harm as a good thing in families for children that are, that are cut caught in this trans nonsense, and they are cementing the fact that the wife is the abuser if they refuse to play along with the fetishistic behaviours and fetishistic desires of their middle-aged husbands. That's it. All right? Um, go well. I'll see you later.